feel pretty serious to me and I don't have the skills I need to really deal with them. Yeah, they insist that I do as a part-time job. I do my regular job and then I do agile coaching on the side. Yeah. So that's another thing we hear a lot. A third is, huh, I know how to do agile, but I can't make others do it right. The huh. clowns. Huh. <laughs> you know, yeah. And the fourth is this, what's an agile coach good for? A team member might ask this, what, what, what's my Agile coach supposed to do? Because I don't get it. I don't get what their value is supposed to be. Yeah. Do you relate to any of these? Yeah, yeah. So this is the state we're in right now with Agile coaching. It's, it's just being defined. Um, the Coaching Agile Teams book, which I wrote four years ago, started to define it, um, but really only at a, at a basic level. Um, and so what we're going to share with you today is a learning path for developing or um, yourself or your organization's coaching capabilities with several steps. So we, we specialize in, in working with coaches. We travel around the world and um, train them. Uh, sometimes they're um, uh, managers, mm -hmm. sometimes they're scrum masters, sometimes they're um, team leads of some kind, sometimes yeah. they're product owners. Yeah. We've And we've uh, uh, trained about uh, 2000 at this point so yeah. we've we've heard their stories we know what um, challenges they face we know what skills they have what yeah. what skills they maybe don't have yeah. and uh, what they what they feel like they need yeah. we feel their pain all the time <laughs> so what Michael and I were asked to do almost you know it's coming up on three years now that we've started this journey about three years ago in June, a group called the International Consortium for Agile asked us to be part of a working group. And the purpose of that working group was to define the learning objectives for what Agile coaches should be able to know, do, and be at several levels of development. And so it took us about a year to come up with the learning objectives for the first two levels to get that out for industry peer review and publish that. Yeah. And um, in the last year, we have been working on the third level, which is Enterprise Agile Coaching level, which is going to come out in a beta form in the next month or so. And I just want to say, the reason that we liked this particular path, we, we know that there's a huge amount of controversy in the Agile world about certifications, the C word, right? <laughs> some people like them, some people hate them, some people think they are the work of the devil, and <laughs> some people don't care. Uh, frankly, we don't care, but we know that some people, it's important to them and their companies. And more, we know that it's important, even if you don't get a certification, it's important to know what would you be expected to do. And the reason that we liked working with IC Agile, the International Consortium for Agile, is because the learning path is, trans is, is uh, open source. So it's not just tied to a, a certification path. It's just this is what you ought to know if you're going to be an Agile coach. And you could train yourself in it. You could get mentored in it. We don't care. Uh, we don't care if you're certified or not. But we wanted to create some definition and some common understanding together of what it would take. So we started to create that definition, and one of the things that we did was just match what was already true in the world, that there really are kind of three levels of people who do Agile coaching. One is a, a team facilitator level. Think about this as an iteration manager or a scrum master. Team facilitator is just a more generic term. Yeah. So someone who uh, helps the team collaborate, helps them run the, uh, the ceremonies for one or a handful of teams. That's that level, right? And that's an important level because that's the person who's on the ground with the team all the time. That's the person seeing the problems, helping the team through the conflict, helping the team learn how to collaborate. And if you were um, uh, thinking about this from an executive or an organizational point of view, this is who you'd have the most of. You'd have lots of these folks. Yes. Um, probably close to one per team, certainly from my point of view, one per every other team. Yep. And then the next level, Agile Coach, you would have relatively fewer of these. This is someone who works at a multi-team level, a program level. Agile Coach would be developing other scrum masters and product owners and helping managers understand how they fit into the Agile world, right? advising managers, working on impediments at the multi-team level. The, the, the top level, which I'm writing a book about right now called Coaching the Agile Enterprise, though after today, I'm going to have to change the title to Coaching Enterprise Agility, Agility because uh, I can't use the term Agile anymore, apparently. <laughs> okay, uh, message received, morning, right? Dave. <laughs> um, uh, 
at, at that level, there's, there's really not very many of those needed, but the, the level of knowledge, as we've created a learning path for this, we've been uh, astounded to think, hmm, I wonder if we could uh, pass the, this test. I, mean, honestly, um, I honestly. wonder if we could know all these things. And it, it's the kind of person that both understands in everything from organizational structure and mm -hmm. culture, how that changes things, to how you scale how you do the importance of technical practices and so forth. Mm -hmm. And so it's a pretty high bar. Yeah. And it's somebody that needs to not just be a, a consulting geek and, and be able to you know, give executives a lecture or something on Agile, but that it can actually stand eyeball to eyeball with them and challenge them for what mm -hmm. they need to do and how they need to change or how they need to say, no, nah, I'm not going to do this. So do you get that it would be a lot of personal and professional development to be able to hold that kind of presence in an organization? Yeah. So it's a, it takes a while to get to that level. Right? The, the other thing I want to say is that people at this level, and I suspect that some of you often get drawn into this space because nobody's dealing with it. Do you get drawn into organizational impediments, mm -hmm. like the performance management system, like facilities, facilities, like finance and budget process? Like leaders talking the talk but not walking the talk? Yes, yes. Well, guess what? If you feel like you're out of your depth, you probably are. Because as we've developed the learning objectives and the path all the way up to that, we've realized how much there is to know and how much there is to develop one's self to have enough of a presence to work with executives from that kind of perspective. You know? So let's focus on the first two levels because that's where the uh, learning path is most solid right now. Okay. So team facilitator level. Oh, there's only 25 things to know here. It's not that bad. Only so 25. The, the, the message here is that it's not just taking a course in Agile or studying mm -hmm. Agile. That's obviously, you got to, that's the table stakes, if you will, to get in. You have to know Agile, mm -hmm. but you also have to know a lot of stuff about facilitation and about team boundaries and how teams work. Yeah. The primary thing that holds self-organization, helpful self-organization back on teams is their iteration manager or their scrum master when that person is in the middle of every single meeting, in the middle of every single conversation. And what you learn when you learn how to facilitate is to step out of the middle of the conversation and design an environment in which the team members can interact with the team members. And this takes a lot of internal maturity to be able to be willing to step out, not be in the spotlight, but actually serve a much more important role. Because um, self-organized teams, helping create a self-organized team is neither about telling them what to do, mm -hmm. but it's also not about going away and saying, oh, they'll just figure it out themselves. Yeah. That's not se what self-organization means. That's not how you guide or lead yeah. teams to self-organization. So it's a more delicate balance and requires this mindset shift that Lisa's talking about. Yeah. We call it the facilitator's stance. How, where do you stand? Yeah. So the next level up, Agile coach, don't, don't freak out. There's more. There's 80 of them at this level, 80 learning objectives, yeah? And it includes the team facilitator yeah, so ones. Yeah, it's like a natural maturity path, right? Um, because many people uh, progress to high levels in their organization and never learn facilitation skills. So don't make it up that just because you progress to a certain level, you don't need to go back and get that skill. Most people do. Most people do. Yeah. So, okay, so here are many things to know. And we want to give you a way to make sense of all of these things. This is a very useful checklist, but it's a little overwhelming. Yeah, if you were it? just if you were just going to go down this list, that would be hard to create your own learning path for. Would you right. agree? Yeah. It's a, it's yeah. a little overwhelming. So we want it to give to me. you a, a model or a way to categorize things, and this is what we use when we coach and develop agile coaches. And it's what we use in our courses to help people understand the knowledge areas and skills needed to be a really good agile coach. A lot simpler, isn't it? Oh. Only eight things on this. Okay. This is an Agile coaching competency framework. This is also Creative Commons. We want you to use it to adapt it to help other people understand Agile coaching through your expression of it. And to think about where you're good in your uh, personally and where maybe in your organization you're strong and where you're, you need some development. So the first thing in this and in the largest part of this is Agile Lean Practitioner, okay? To be an Agile coach, you've got to know Agile Lean. End of story. And you've got to keep up with it. 
you guys know how fast this world is evolving, right? You can't even keep up with the blog post on a daily basis, yeah? But, you, but keeping up with the new practices is really useful, really being deep in the values and the principles as well. Yeah? Yeah. That's what this one's about. Just to tell you how old I am, um, when, <laughs> I, when I started in Agile, which was in 2001, I could and did read every book in the Agile canon. Now, nobody could do that unless you, unless you have photo reading and you could read it in, you know, 20 seconds. You couldn't possibly read all those books. Yeah. But you ought to have some systematic plan for studying what's going on. For keeping up to speed, yeah? So that's a big knowledge area. Now we're going to talk about four skill sets that Agile coaches need to develop in themselves. Yeah? On this side, it's teaching and mentoring. They're very similar. That's why they're on this side together. So as an Agile coach, you certainly teach people things, don't you? Yeah, you, pro you probably teach them the basics of Agile, oh, I don't know, a hundred different times, right? You have to talk, to, even if you're just sitting down drawing it on a napkin, you're teaching someone. The, the, uh, the basic distinction between teaching and mentoring is usually when you're teaching or training, same difference for us, uh, you have an agenda. You have a set of learning objectives. Mm -hmm. When we teach, we have a, um, a facilitator guide that's about 30 or 40 pages long of, mm -hmm. of how we want to run the class and what we want to do at each place in it. So you have your own uh, th thought about what needs to happen. When you're a mentor, um, you don't so much. More, more the person comes to you and pulls, uh, uh, yeah. you know, whatever's needed out yeah. of you, right? Yeah. So on this side, in order to teach or mentor, you actually have to know more about the subject area than the people you're teaching or mentoring. Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense, right? We call that that you stand in your content authority, mm -hmm. that that's where you derive your benefit yeah. to other people. And now it's totally different on the other side. Because on the other side, it's actually useful to be a subject matter dummy. Because the, these skills, professional coaching and facilitating, do not require you to know the subject matter when you do them purely. Now, have you ever had somebody tell you that it was a good idea to be a subject matter dummy? How many people? <laughs> we are. Yes, okay. we are. And if you can't be a subject matter dummy, that's fine. You will have to learn and refine the skill of self-management, knowing when to offer your subject matter expertise on this side and knowing when to boycott it for this side. So, so in, in facilitating, sort of similar to teaching, we have a set of deliverables. We have an outcome. We have a purpose for a meeting, right? But, but I'm not voting on... Um, I say, this is the way we're going to create um, a, a plan about stories, but I don't say, no, that should be an eight and that should be a three. I don't, mm -hmm. that's not my job, right? It's the team's job to do that. So I've got a, I've sort of got a plan of facilitating. In coaching, professional coaching, I let the other person completely bring the agenda. Mm -hmm. What do they care about? What's important to them? Mm -hmm. And how can I somehow help them get what they want mm -hmm. without, doesn't matter what I want. That's the position that I'm taking in professional coaching. Have you noticed how Agile sometimes creates a bit of a crisis in people? That they have a hard time changing? They have a hard time shifting to this new mindset? Yeah. These skill sets over here are the two that help them change. Because the, 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 learning, the change process could start with teaching, for instance, or training. It's, it's useful to know, but it doesn't end there. Because if you run into resistance, we say, Will it help to teach louder? I bet you've tried Probably it. Probably not. I bet you found out that it doesn't help, right? I mean, it just creates more resistance, right? So this is where professional coaching can come in especially. OK, so we've got one big knowledge area, four skill sets. And down here, we have three specialty areas, or like deep disciplines within Agile coaching. So if uh, we use the metaphor of being a doctor. Being a doctor, you, uh, th some people are general practitioners. They know about, you know, a little about everything. And some people, doctors, are specialists. They're a specialist in the heart or uh, in uh, the um, skin or in the feet. Yeah. So this is more Same like idea. the specialties. Same idea. So the very first specialty we saw arise in the Agile coaching world, not surprisingly, is technical. People who were on a path of technical mastery. So think about the signers of the Agile Manifesto. I would say most of them are technical coaches. Think about a lot of the people who you've had talks from here um, in this last few days. A lot of, there are many of them on a path of technical mastery. And so when they go into coaching organization, 
They coach them on technical stuff. And guess what skills they use? Teaching or mentoring. That makes perfect sense, right? Works pretty well. Have you noticed, though, that Agile doesn't want to stay in the technical box? That it wants to move out into the organization. In fact, the very first thing Agile wants to do is it wants to put the business in the driver's seat of the whole process. Right? And what's happened in terms of the evolution of uh, Agile and Lean processes is that you see more and more focus on products and uh, product management, on uh, like Lean Startup, um, mm -hmm. uh, developing the customer instead of developing the software, on yeah. doing experiments. Um, uh, the, another uh, person in that uh, area, oh, I'm gonna do but, oh there it is, um, is uh, uh, Don Reinertsen, Product mm -hmm. Development Flow, mm -hmm. um, Eric Rees in Lean Startup, Jeff Patton. So those are the things you would People go like learn if you want to be um, a business specialty Agile coach, and we need you to do that. Agile needs you all to develop yourselves as business specialty Agile coaches because there are not enough people who understand how to help the business take up their place in this beautiful thing that could actually be pretty ugly if the business doesn't get in the driver's seat. So technical business. And the third one is transformation. Just because Agile provokes transformation whether or not you want it. Now this field is actually not based in Agile or driven by Agile. It's, um, it's a field that already existed, um, organization development, mm -hmm. leadership development, um, change management. It's something that gets provoked by Agile. People that you know, try to introduce a transformation need to understand that, right? They need to understand how people change. They need to understand how organizations change or how culture puts a glass ceiling on the ability of Agile to spread. Now, here's what we tell Agile coaches who we help train and develop. We tell them, choose. Decide what you're going to be good at, and do not think you're going to be good at all eight of these things. In fact, we say, um, on this side, know a reasonable amount about how to teach and mentor people, but be really good at one of these, because this is your content authority side. Over here, Yes, know the basics of professional coaching and facilitating, but be really good at one because this is your process authority side. And down here, you know, know a reasonable amount about all three so that you can have a, a dinner time conversation with someone about it, but be really good at one because the world needs you to be really good at one of these things and pair with other people who are good at the others. So instead of eight, that's only four that we suggest that you really focus on. One from each side, the top and one from the bottom. So here is my um, truth in advertising profile. See, I would like it if more Agile coaches knew where they were strong and where they weren't, so that we could be clear with our organizations about what we're able to do and where we need to pair with other Agile coaches in the areas that we're not able to have depth. So here's mine. Um, pretty strong Agile Lean practitioner. I've been doing this since 2004, and I try my very best to keep up. Strong in teaching and mentoring, more teaching than mentoring, really strong in professional coaching, pretty good in facilitating. I've spent a lot of time developing myself in these four areas. Now, I know enough about all three of these to know when a company's in trouble. So for example, I can talk with uh, leaders of a company and say, you know what? You don't have a continuous integration process. Your teams are not able to actually deliver. Now, you wouldn't hire me to set up the continuous integration servers because I've got nothing else here. That's it. However, if you want to transform your organization, if you want to help people change, that's my specialty. And I'm pretty good in helping people in the business side understand their role, their place, their power with that. So maybe you can start to think about yourself and uh, where your strengths are, where your weaknesses are, and maybe your organization. And, and where do we, we, um, we use this uh, uh, framework as um, a way for an organization to take a look at itself, both the individual mm -hmm. coaches, but also the whole organization. And where are we strong? Yeah. And where do we need? Because different, different companies need different levels, right? Some and at really different times. Right? Like early on in Agile adoption, you probably need more teaching. 
Later on, when the teaching is, is pretty good and you've got a lot of resistance, you need people with more professional coaching and facilitation skill. Yeah? So think about it for yourself. What do you need? Using a framework like this, where are you already strong? I'm going to show you that again. Where are you already strong? Where are you being called to grow? And if you are hiring or developing internal Agile coaches, maybe you've just found a hole. When people see this framework when we use it in our classes, they usually say, oh my gosh, now I get it. Now I get why our transformation has not been successful. We have a big hole over here. So I think let's have them talk to each other. Yeah, sounds good. So, so um, we want you to, to take the handout. Hopefully, you uh, at least have one between two or three of you. And um, turn to the person next to you, or um, if uh, your partner's in a different part of the room, go join them. And do give a little thought to where are you strong, where would you like to develop, and just exchange some notes with the person next to you. Okay. At the end, we'll raise our hands like this, and that means everybody should raise their hand and stop talking, okay? Will you do that? Go ahead. Thank you. You've learned our secret crowd control technique. It works great. It works great in a room of 800 people, too. Yeah. So we hope you're starting to figure out some things, huh? Is it starting to help in some ways? Make sense of the world? Yeah, good. Good, because the Agile coaching world has been pretty uh, murky up to this point, right? Yeah, great. great. So we want to show you some ways that other people have used this framework. Because as Michael said, we've taught, he said 2,000, but he doesn't know I did it count in our student database. It's almost 2,300 people that we've trained so far. And, um, and they've gone off and used this framework for many different applications. We want to just show you three of those. There are three short videos of them talking about it in their own words. Okay, here's the first one. Um, how, how this gentleman, Paul Tevis, developed himself as an Agile coach and how he was able to use it in a job interview to explain what he was looking for, what he was strong in, and what they were going to get so that when he got there, he could be sure that the job was the one he wanted and that they really wanted him. Well, that's not going to work. It's connected. We tested it before. Um, and the guy's gone. Hmm. Ah. Uh. Well, he's there. Yeah, not yet. The laptop is up. It's all the way up. Ready? Is he ready? Hi, uh, my name is Paul Tevis, and I'm a Scrum Master and Coach at uh, Appfolio. Uh, today is actually day 18 of me working at Appfolio. And what I wanted to share with you today is how coaching competency framework actually helped me to get this job. Um, when I was going through the interview process, everything in my resume and my background sort of screams developer, you know, software engineer, senior software engineer, and I was really looking to make a transition from being a sort of a part-time scrum master, part-time developer, into really a full-time scrum master and coaching role. And when they were sort of asking me, sort of in the process, you know, what do you, what do you have that is going to be useful to us. How do you see the, the role of an actual coach? I remembered the, the diagram that Lisa and Michael had put out on the floor in tape when I had taken the uh, Coaching Agile Teams class. And that immediately came to mind, and I turned around, there's a whiteboard behind me, and I just said, do you mind if I, and I started to draw the, the framework up. And I said, you know, where I'm coming from, I'm living a lot in this sort of contentful side of this, doing a lot of teaching and a lot of mentoring because I have that technology background here. But what really attracts me about coaching is really on that, that other side, that sort of less contentful uh, side, doing facilitation and, and, and professional coaching. And they sort of nodded and went, yeah, that, that's sort of what we need. We've got people who can do the stuff over here, but we really need people who have the skills in this part of the, of the framework. And I said, well, I can do this. These are the, the sort of other skills that I have. And it helped us to have that conversation. It gave us a language 
to communicate sort of what it was that they needed and what I had to offer. And as a result, as I said, today is day 18 of, uh, of me working there. This guy's actually from Spain, so you're going to get to enjoy his Spanish accent. Um, he talks about how he um, makes sense of the people he's hired through the Agile Coaching Competency Framework, and it helps him guide him in how he needs to develop them. Okay, I will draw it, okay? Mm, okay, the competency sure. framework. This coach, in my opinion, is not coaching the teams, it's just pushing the teams. It's pushing teams hard, and he is also, uh, he's, uh, in my opinion, right, because these teams are, are not the, the best we, do, the, we could have, but uh, he's not trying to make that team, the, the, that team develop instead. He's pushing that team because he's a very good technician. He thinks that everyone could be uh, the the good technician that he is, but he is not. Uh, he's not drawing the path of growth for those teams. Actually, the thing that I'm trying to do right now is try to develop him a little bit as a coach and as a mentor, so we can keep him because he's a very, very good. Um, he has a lot of potential, in my in my opinion. He could be very good. This could be a radar. This could be a, a radar for me to understand uh, how to strategize. In my in my program in my strategy for uh, transform the organization. So that's the second story, and the third one is, um, you know, we didn't intend this to happen, but as we've taught people this framework, they've gone into their uh, user groups and their meetups, and they've taught other people the framework and it's created the basis for a lot of really useful conversations among communities of Agile coaches. So these are the reports we've gotten so far around the world of the places where people have already done this. I'm sure there's more, but these are the ones we know about. And um, this next woman, Erin, is someone who um, has used this framework in her own um, Agile coaching community in Denver, Colorado. Uh, we run an Agile coaching um, special interest group in Denver and we actually introduced the framework to them just a couple weeks ago and it was amazing how many people out there that are calling themselves coaches or wanting to be coaches or consultants you know around helping people do work better and changing their the beliefs of and creating better cultures you know they themselves will start admitting that they struggle with what it means or where they've come from and um, we've been able to have these really robust discussions around this framework about where did I start? Did I start as a trainer? Did I start as a mentor or an expert, you know, technical expert? And, and where am I going? So uh, those are three of about six videos that are out on YouTube. Those are just small portions of videos that you can find. Um, lots of stories out there. So two resources. One is our website, which has a resources section, a uh, link over on the right, that's organized by the, this competency framework. So, so books, classes, uh, articles, blogs, etc., cetera, that, that tie to one of those areas. Okay. And the other is uh, icagile.com, where those learning objectives are. So go and download those. They're, you know, they're free. You don't have to go to any certification. You can just say, you know, individual study list. It could be your reading list of here's here's what I ought to, you know, think about. Here's what I ought to um, uh, uh, get better at. Now we have uh, maybe five or ten minutes. Um, if it's useful for you to ask some questions, we'd be happy to answer them. Are you having an Agile coaching institute? Are we having an Agile coaching institute? Hi, are we hiring an Agile Coaching Institute? <laughs> well, you know, it's funny you say that because, um, because Agile Coaching Institute is changing a little bit. So 
our mission has been and still remains very clearly, we're out to develop agile coaches and raise the level of skill in agile coaches all over the world, period. We also recognize, though, that, um, that we have to take a special interest in those people who really want to become enterprise agile coaches. Because truthfully, I don't know even one person who should really call themselves an enterprise agile coach. Not one. Because as we've developed the learning, learning objectives for that, we realize how much you really have to know, do, and be. Yeah. So, um, so our vision is to take a special interest in those folks who really want to go to that level and help them know what we know, help us fill in our own gaps in stuff we don't know to be more effective at that level. Um, and then over time, I think there will be a, a small group of very specialized consultants um, growing out of that. But it's not next week. <laughs> it's, and it's not today. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Back here. Yes. Yeah, so, he, so here's where I want you to look. I want you to look at those learning objectives because it's not just a list. It's a title. It's a context statement. And it's about this much text about each one. It's very specific about what you should be able to know and do. And so there are 25 of those for that first Agile Team Facilitator level and 80 for the next level. I think that will point you into a much more specific assessment. Yeah. The, the other thing is that um, uh, at least courses that go through the IC Agile process are, are independently accredited by them as fulfilling those learning objectives. I mean, mm -hmm. for a course to get accredited, it has to do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, at least the process at IC Agile is a um, uh, panel-based. So we have a, a, a rubric, and we to, to, to there's the, the part that we're talking about is just learning, right? Mm -hmm. It's not competence. It's only learning. Oh, so yeah. that's one level of things. Another level of things is are you competent at it? Um, so we've instituted with uh, the IC Agile people um, a, a process for establishing your competence through a panel of uh, uh, expert Agile coaches that mm -hmm. you have actually can do those things in those different areas. You can you demonstrate can actually, that you have right, those skills. Yeah. Demonstrate those things. Okay. That model helps the Right. Let me repeat this. So he's saying the model helps under, you know, you understanding where you are and where the gaps are, but the model doesn't address how do you go about filling the gaps. So what would you do first, for example? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, um, it's really funny you say that because uh, we do a, a day-long assessment around this model with an intact group of coaches. So like, for example, if you had um, you know, all the coaches in a Bangalore meetup, we might do it with them. Or inside of a company, we do it with them. And, um, and we guide them through a process of deciding what they're going to learn next. And there's not, the right, there's not a right answer. There's not like what each person should do next. Yeah? It's very individualized. And it has to do with what, with the, here's where I look. I look to the situations that I get put in that I feel like I don't have good skill in. That's where I look. It's, it's also meant as a conversation starter between you and a, and a framework for thinking about between you and a mentor, for instance, mm -hmm. or you and a manager or a leader yeah. in your organization or whatever. Yeah. And here's what I think I can do. What do you think I can do? Or yeah. team, what do you think yeah. I can do? And what do we need? What do we need me to be able to do yeah. and to develop? How do I, so right. not, uh, certainly a, an objective side is possible, but also having a conversation and a mm -hmm. dialogue and a collaboration around what's needed does that make sense? Because what you need is going to be different at different times. What the organization needs is going to be different at different times. It's kind of matching those. Back here. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so he's referring to our talk a few days ago. Um, that there are there are there are new breed organizations out there. And most of your companies are not it, right? 
And so the question, go ahead and repeat the question, Michael. Um, are, are we making the assumption that um, uh, people that are in Agile coaching are at uh, this, what's called the green level, which is a pluralistic ability to take other people's perspectives and value other people's perspectives kind of a level, and also uh, the teal level, which is um, uh, uh, even more systemic, uh, uh, you know, highly tolerant of differences mm -hmm. of different people. Um, the and the people they're coaching. So the reality is the vast majority of the people that we Agilists are coaching are not at the teal level. Maybe some of them are at the green level, but most of them are at what's called orange, which is a very uh, individualistic freedom. It's about freedom. Capitalist. It's about yeah. It's about success. It's about monetary success specifically. Yeah. So uh, it's useful to be able to coach someone at that level for you to actually be maybe one level above them. And here's the hard thing: you have to go meet them where they are and talk in terms that they understand. Not talk Pe down to them. I'm not suggesting that. Yeah. The, be able the, to stand in, in professional coaching and talk with them in a way that will help them. Yeah. The difference between people at different levels in this uh, uh, thing, that if, you, if you're wanting to uh, read about it, uh, read, look for spiral dynamics. Mm -hmm. um, people, uh, when they get to the teal level, are, are different than the other people in that they don't think that everybody else is wrong or stupid. Yeah. People that are at teal um, believe that all parts of the spiral have value. Mm -hmm. And um, so naturally that's the best place to coach from. It's the most flexible, the most, mm -hmm. it's the most complex. Yeah. You know, it's not that you're a better person as you develop, but you are more capable and you are, you are able to handle more complexity. So yeah. yes, the more complexity, the more ambiguity we can uh, handle as coaches, the more tolerant we can be, the more in touch with our own biases and um, whatever, the more helpful we will be to other people. But that's not an assumption, per se. Yeah. yeah, I was hoping someone from this side would speak up. Go ahead. we got about two more minutes. So did you guys hear this at all? No, OK. So um, he's, he needs to hire someone. Um, he wants to use this framework to, to help him, right? But he's saying, well, how do I know? I'm talking to someone. How do I know if they have this, this area or not? If you're not an expert in it. Yeah, don't look at, he's not looking at the certification, right? So, so you're going to need to enlist the help of people who do know about those things. And if you look on the back of that sheet, there's a starter list of resources for each of those eight areas. So if you're in the position of hiring people, I would say either you or a group of you become familiar with some of those starter resources. And you need to be asking questions from those. Yeah. yeah. What's uh, another a, idea? A really simple way to do it, though, would be to print out that list oh, that we yeah. showed you and say, so tell me about, you know, some of these. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. you know. Tell, tell me about you're... how you maintain neutrality when you have a really strong opinion the team should go a certain way. And Great if your question. BS detector is like, you know, a good manager's, you'll be able to tell when somebody is BSing you. Great. I think that's about all the Unless time we have. Unless they're a sociopath, of course, and then you'll yeah. Oh, there's a one, one. Okay, we're going to do one more. Oh, well, come up here and hold it then. I'm not, I'm not going to hold it. It is, yeah. And uh, here I think you have given some uh, what is the good traits of a coach. And oh, where you can fail. he's telling me what's in my book. This is great. <laughs> well, no, but here's, here's the truth. I don't remember. But you're right. So there is a whole chapter on um, on the traits How of being a good the coach. World war like that, when yeah. The level, level this man yes. has not been paid by yes. Agile Coaching Institute. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's beautiful. He's a, he's a potential candidate for the coach. <laughs> yes. yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. All right. Thank you all for your wonderful attention. Thanks. This is a beautiful place to be. I've really enjoyed it.
Right. 